Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we have an extremely exciting video for you guys because we are dyeing yarn. More specifically, we are dyeing Zara, which we are actually celebrating this month of March 2020, its 30th anniversary in the Filatura de Crosa collection. So as a special surprise, we are releasing Zara as a true undyed base so you guys can experiment with your own colors in your favorite extra fine superwash merino base. So to get started today, firstly what I have done is I have soaked some of the Zara in the raw white in about 32 ounces of water and four tablespoons of citric acid. So these have been soaking for about a half hour now. You really want to let them soak for a little while so the acid really absorbs into the dye because today we are using acid pigment dyes, more specifically the Dharma acid dyes. Um, I have a variety of colors. We got the starter pack and also a few extras to kind of play around with. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my Zara out of the soaking wash. So as I said, this has been soaking with citric acid and water. I'm going to lightly squeeze out some of this water, but I'm going to leave most of it in just because um, I like the extra acidity in this. So then we also have this um, catering tin. It's a four inch deep catering tin full of about six cups of water with another two tablespoons of citric acid. So I'm just going to pop my Zara skeins in there and lay them flat. I have brought this water to a pretty intense simmer and then put it down to low heat because we don't want to burn the yarn. We are just looking to get all of that color absorbed in there. So I like to spread out my skeins just so I can make sure I get full color coverage. And that way I won't have to flip it over several times again. I do, if you guys notice, have these skeins on reusable zip ties. So these are the ones that come apart um, after you use them and you can actually put them on something else. These make it really easy to kind of move them around in the pan and also to hang up to dry when they are finished dyeing. And it also separates them really easily. I know which skein is exactly which. So we are doing a low immersion dye today, which means the water level is just about, just enough to cover or let the yarn soak float to the top but you can still see that there's a lot of yarn that's not covered with water. We do this because we want the pigments to kind of almost speckle on the top. That's at least how I think I'm going to go today. I don't really have something specifically in mind because I think whenever I have something in mind, I get a little bit disappointed. So I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna see where the colors take me and go from there. So now that we have our skeins all ready to go, we can start picking colors. So again, you guys, make sure your water isn't boiling. It just needs to be at a very, very light simmer, so that's why I have it on low heat. Again, we do not want to burn the yarn. So I think to start out, I'm going to go with some Caribbean blue. I love this color, you guys. It's so pretty. I'm just going to take my fingers and kind of spread around some of the pigment. And with these pigments, you guys, less is more. This color spreads around like you wouldn't believe. See, look at that. How beautiful. I'm literally just using two pinches here because we can always go back and add more if we want to. I'm gonna turn down my heat a little bit more. Now it's on actual, the lowest setting it can possibly go because I don't want it bubbling all over the place.
Make sure you guys have some paper towels nearby just because these dyes can get a little messy, especially if you're using your hands. You don't want to get dirty gloves into the next pigment because it'll mix all of the colors. So I make sure I rub my fingers off on either a blank skein that I have nearby or some paper towels. If you don't want to waste any dye, definitely have another skein next to you that you can rub off all of the extra dye on and that can be almost like a yarn mop. So I think that looks really pretty. I think next what I'm going to do is go into some deep magenta. So this is a really, really beautiful pink color. And I think it'll make this blue pop. So I'm going to try and focus it on where there's a lot of white. I don't want them to overlap too much because then it'll go just straight purple. I definitely want you to be able to see some pink in there. Another cool trick, if you guys really love speckled yarn, what you can do is you can take some of these powders and mix them with citric acid so that way they strike really qu quickly, um, re essentially right on contact with the yarn. Or if you guys want really washed color where it's all blended, there's no speckles, what you can do is take a spoon and just mix it all around. Or you can have the water a little higher. So if you want something that's a little more segments of color or speckles, have the lower water have a lower water level. And if you want something that's really, really kind of just blended and beautiful, you can get a little bit more water in that pot. This is just what I feel like doing today. I hope you guys can see how beautiful this color is in person. I hope it shows up on camera because it is gorgeous. It's so bright. And I think what I want to do, because the Zara family of yarns is really, really known for its saturated pigments, is have a super saturated, pigmented, bright colored yarn today for you guys. So I think I'm just going to let it sit for about five minutes before I go in and touch it because I think I really like this spe speckling going on. And the pinks and the blues, I find, take a little bit longer to strike than maybe some other colors like yellow or, um, you know, maybe even green. So I'm just going to let that boil, well, not boil, bubble for a little bit. And then I'll go mix it around and see what I want to add to it. Okay, I'm back you guys. I lied. I didn't wait a full five minutes because I really think I just want to go around and start mixing in some of this color. Oh, I love how these pinks look. I like to go in with the pink first because sometimes blue can completely overpower a yarn. So I like the pinks to get enough coverage before I go in and mix in all of the blues, which of course can be unavoidable sometimes. You know, sometimes you just have to take things and roll with them. Make sure you guys get enough color on those edges. Sometimes you have to spread them out a little bit because they can tend to get mushed up in the sides and then they lose out on color. But we are actually going to flip the yarn and dye on the back as well. So you'll have a chance to really move around that yarn and make sure you don't 
miss any kind of spots with color unless you're looking to leave white spots all around which I kind of really am loving right now so I might even do that And the slower you guys go to move these colors around, you can see here there's no real color coming up because I took my time getting around to that blue because I really like that speckled look. Um, the longer you wait, the more kind of set the color will get in there, which means you'll have more speckles. Okay, you guys, so we're still blending this color. I like how you can see lots of variegations in here. And I know hand dyeing can seem really, really intimidating, but I will tell you guys, today is my first time ever hand dyeing yarn. I did two test skeins earlier, and I was just testing out some of the colors and seeing how they combine together, and this is literally my third and fourth skein that I've ever dyed. So we'll see, hopefully the colors come out really pretty in the end, but if I can make colors that I want to knit with or that a lot of people think are pretty, then I'm sure you guys can too. Plus it's so fun. Ooh, careful. That water almost bubbled up and got me. Actually going to turn off the heat for a few minutes just because this is really hot and it's starting to bubble up and I don't want this yarn to burn. I might actually add a little bit of water once I flip it just because we're boiling off some with the steam of course and whenever you add water you want to make sure you also add some more acid because the more water you add the more you dilute the acidity of the water in the pan. I'm just gonna add a little bit more deep magenta over here just because I can see some white spots. And feel free to go back and touch up wherever you see fit. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this sitting, you guys, for maybe about five minutes. I just want all of this extra color to kind of start absorbing before I flip the yarn, just because if I pick it up now, then all of the dyes will start to bleed together, and I really love this color separation we have going on. Make sure you try and get all of the dyes off of the edge of the pot. Something also important to note, you guys, is this is not the only way you can dye. You can do full immersion dyeing. You can dilute these pigments into water solutions so it's a little bit more runny of colors. You can do... The possibilities are really endless. You know, I actually learned a lot of what I know about dyeing from Chemnitz on YouTube. She has an amazing channel where she does dye pots every week. Every week. Um, several of them actually and she's really informative she has tons of materials that she uses in helpful tips and tricks that's where I learned about these reusable zip ties and also this is the pan recommendation that she has
Okay. Yeah, I'm going to let this sit because I think these are really, really pretty. Okay, I am back, you guys. So I am just about ready to flip these. I have waited about mm, maybe five or seven minutes just to let that color absorb. And you can see when I pick up, there's very little color bleeding in the pan. And that is good. That is exactly what we were looking for, just so it doesn't go everywhere and get on all of those beautiful white spots. So I'm just going to spread out the yarn and kind of look for anywhere that's white or not color saturated. And kind of pull those to the top so we can make sure we get them. Make sure you use a spoon or a tongs for this because this pan is hot. Do not forget. am going to add a little bit of water. Um, I am going to add in about one cup and about another half tablespoon or so of citric acid mixed in it just because we have boiled down some of the water at this point. So if you guys don't want to use citric acid, you can also use vinegar to make the water a little bit more acidic. Personally, I hate the smell of vinegar, so I like to use citric acid. There we go. Make sure that water is nice and even. Okay, and now we are back to dyeing. So again, I'm gonna go in with some of my Caribbean blue. There is already a lot of blue showing up on this side, so I'm just gonna go and deepen some of that up and maybe get a couple of the white spots. But I think I'm gonna go more pink on this side. Also, you guys, something else I really forgot to mention is you should definitely be wearing a respirator or a mask so you're not inhaling these pigments. I am not because just for the sake of the video purposes and the audio, I didn't want it to sound all muffled. However, you guys should definitely not do that. You should. This is an example when you should do as I say and not as I do because this is not the healthiest of thing to inhale. Again, I'm going to let that sit for a couple minutes before I go in and start mixing it around. Okay, now I'm going to go back in and kind of start mixing around some of this color with my spoon.
we have got a lot of color in here so we might need to add a little bit more acid if you guys see that your yarn is not really absorbing the color that just means your water is not acidic enough so you can go ahead and add more vinegar or citric acid whatever you are using Okay, so now you can just leave all of that sitting there until you start seeing that the spoon is running clean. You can very clearly see it's not doing that now. Some of the blues are striking faster than the pinks. So you can see there's a lot less pigment there than there is here. So once that runs clean, you are good to let it sit and cool down completely before you wash it. If you want, you could also flip these over again just to make sure you got all of those white spots. However, I kind of am liking the white spots on here. Again, just my personal preference. So as I said, I'm just gonna let that sit and simmer for about five minutes and then I'm going to turn it all off and just let it cool completely. I'm gonna add a little bit more acid in here just to make sure that it all absorbs. So I didn't add the acid directly on the yarn, except for when it popped and kind of splashed me a little bit. I did not want to get burned, but you can already see some of that color is starting to absorb. This side is running a little bit cleaner. It is obviously still very blue, but hopefully now with a little bit of acid. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the water because this is getting dangerous, or turn off the heat, and just let this sit and soak in all of that dye. Okay, you guys, and we are back. So I have let these yarn babies soak for about a half hour or so. Um, and you can see the water is running pretty clear now. I think it is safe to take these out and wash them. There might be just a little bit of color transfer, but I think I put a lot of pigments in there, so I think this is about all we're going to soak up. So I am just going to put another pair of gloves on. Just give me one second. Even though at this point I shouldn't have much color transfer at all, it's just I don't want to put my hands in the pure acid or the diluted acid, should I say. I already have tons of dye on my hands from earlier, so 
Okay. So I am just going to pick these up and kind of squeeze out some of the water. You can see there is a little bit of blue color transfer, so I might need to give these another soak after in just some acidic water to really get the last of that color absorbed. Um, and when you're wringing out skeins, you don't want to twist it. It's really not good for the yarn, so just try and squeeze it out with your hands. And then I will show you guys what washing looks like. Okay, so some people don't show the wash step, but I want to show you guys just because if for anybody who's new to dyeing, you want to see that the color will run clear. So I'm just going to put in some slightly cold, maybe room temperature water. I'm going to lower that water a little bit so you guys can still hear me. So I'm just going to really spread out those fibers in there. Make sure everything gets coated with the, the clean water. Then you can take a little bit of clear baby shampoo or clear dishwashing liquid and you know just spread it around between your hands and let it soak all in those fibers to kind of wash them out. Sometimes the soap can actually make some of the colors bleed a little bit more and it'll let you know if you need to soak all of your yarn in another acid bath base. It'll let you know if you need to soak your yarn in another acid bath. So let's pick these up to see. And that looks pretty clean to me. Let's do one more test. We'll see. clear. It might be hard for you guys to tell because this glass is slightly green tinted, but from where I'm standing, it looks very clear. So, I'm just going to squeeze these out. If you have a spin dryer, go ahead and use that to get all of the water out. Um, and then I'm going to hang them up to dry and show you guys the final look. So that's it you guys. These are how the two skeins came out. I am so pleased with them. I think they look really beautiful. I think they'll knit up really, really nicely. And we're actually going to be giving these two skeins away to one lucky follower. So I will have all of the directions in order to enter the giveaway down below in the description. So make sure you check that out and good luck if you decide to enter. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like and comment down below and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks.